Welcome back everyone. In our previous videos, we talked about server and client components in Next.js. In this video, we're going to learn about the rendering lifecycle of server and client components. In simpler terms, we will explore how they come to life on your screen. Understanding this process is not mandatory for building Next.js apps, but it is like knowing what happens in the kitchen before your food arrives at the table. Not necessary for enjoying your meal, but definitely interesting. For React server components, it is important to consider three elements. Your browser, which is the client, and on the server side, Next.js, which is the framework, and React, which is the library. Let's break down the initial loading sequence step by step. When your browser requests a page, the Next.js app router matches the requested URL to a server component. Next.js then instructs React to render that server component. React renders the server component and any child components that are also server components, converting them into a special JSON format known as the RSC payload. If you inspect the network tab when navigating to a route, you will come across this special JSON format, which is the RSC payload. During this rendering, if any server component suspends, React pauses rendering of that subtree and sends a placeholder value instead. Meanwhile, Client components are prepared with instructions for later in the lifecycle. Next.js uses the RSC payload, which includes the client component instructions, to generate HTML on the server. This HTML is streamed to your browser to immediately show a fast, non interactive preview of the route. Alongside, Next.js streams the RSC payload as React renders each unit of UI. In the browser, Next.js processes the streamed React response. React uses the RSC payload and client component instructions to progressively render the UI. Once all the components and the server components output has been loaded, the final UI state is presented to the user. Client components undergo hydration, transforming our app from a static display into an interactive experience. This is the initial loading sequence. Next, let's take a look at the update sequence for refreshing parts of the app. The browser requests a refetch of a specific UI, such as a full route. Next.js processes the request and matches it to the requested server component. Next.js instructs React to render the component tree. React renders the components similar to the initial loading. But unlike the initial sequence, there is no HTML generation for updates. Next.js progressively streams the response data back to the client. On receiving the streamed response, Next.js triggers a re-render of the route using the new output. React reconciles or merges the new rendered output with the existing components on screen. Since the UI description is a special JSON format and not HTML, React can update the DOM while preserving crucial UI updates such as focus or input values. This is the essence of the RSC rendering lifecycle with the app router in Next.js. If we dive deeper into rendering, we have three server rendering strategies, static rendering, dynamic rendering, and streaming. Let's take a closer look at each of these next. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.